We're on the last section of the last test. So this is the home stretch. Problem one. A restaurant menu lists eight dinners and three desserts. How many different dinner dessert combinations are possible from this menu? So you have eight dinners, and for each of them you can have three different desserts. Right? So it's eight times three combinations, and that's twenty-four. And you can list them all out, right? For dinner one, you could have one, two, three uh, desserts. For dinner two, you could have one, two, three desserts. So you would have three for each of the eight, three possible desserts. So that's how you get to 24. Problem two. The sum of 3x and 5, the sum of 3x and 5 is equal, is equal to the product, the product of x times 1 third. So I just wrote it, you know, I read it, and while I read it, I wrote it out. The sum of 3x and 5 is equal to the product of x and 1 third. Which of the following equations gives the relationship stated in the problem above? Well, exactly as I wrote it, that's choice E, right? x times 1 third, that's the same thing as 1 third x, right? So that's 1 third x. So that's choice E. Problem 3. Problem 3. Let me see if I can do it right here. A clerk accidentally threw a valuable document into one of 90 trash cans. All right, one of 90 trash cans. Or let's say there are 90 trash cans. It is equally likely that the document is in any one of these 90 trash cans. If of exactly 15 of these 90 trash cans are blue, what is the probability that the document will be in a blue trash can? Well, it's 15 of these 90 are blue, so the probability it's going to be in one of those 15 is going to be essentially 15 over 90. How do I know that? Well, there's a hundred probability. There's a hundred percent probability it's in one of the ninety, right? And so, if I want to know what's the probability it's in one of the blue, I take the fraction of the blue over the whole, and that's the probability that it's in one of the blue trash cans. And if I divide the top and the bottom, let's see, fifteen goes into ninety. Fifteen goes into thirty-two times. Goes into ninety-six times. So this is one over six. Just divide the numerator and the denominator by fifteen, and that's choice C. Next problem. Problem four. How many different integer pairs satisfy the equation x over y is equal to one half? So another way of writing this, you could say that x is equal to one half y. I just multiply both sides by y. Or you can multiply both sides by two and you say two x is equal to y. So how many integer pairs satisfy this? Well, any integer I've put in here, I can get I double it and I get a y. So what are the pairs? 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 3, 6, 4, 8, 5, 10. I can, they're infinite. I can keep going. So the answer is more than 4. I mean, I listed more than 4 just in the span of about 5 seconds. So the answer is definitely e. There's infinite integer pairs that satisfy that equation. Next problem. Problem 5. I have to do it. Let me see what they're asking first. According to the graph above, during which of the following two month per two month periods did Ellen's bookstore sell the least number of books? A two month period. Interesting. So let's draw the graph. And so this is June, July, August, September, October, November, and it's ten, twenty. 30, 40, and I'm going to try to draw it as best as they drew it, as best as I can. So June looks like they sold a little under, I don't know, 10 books. June looks something like, like that. July, they sold a ton. They sold 40 books, looks like. So July looks something like that. August, they sold exactly 10 books, it looks like. If I just eyeball it, August. September looks like 30, a little over 30. September is like there. October is like 25. October is looks like 25. And then November, November is 30. November looks about 30. So they say, during which of the following two month periods did Ellen's bookstore sell the least number of books? So let's look at the choices. Choice A, choice A is June and July. Whoops. Choice A is June and July. So how many books did she sell in June and July? We can eyeball. Let's say let's say that this is seven and this is forty. So this is going to be forty seven. July and August. So July and August is this period. July and August. 
So I can already tell you that July and August is going to be higher than June and July. Why? Because August is higher than June. Right? So August looks like 10. This looks like 40. So this is going to be 50. And then if we look at August and September, August and September, August and September is this month period. So if we say that this is 10, and that looks like about, I don't know, 30, 33. So what's 10 plus 33? It's 43. So that's our winner so far. And then they're asking September and October. Let me switch colors. September and October would be that. If that's 33, October looks like about 25. So it's a little bit of approximation here. So what's 33 plus 25? Well, that's 58. That's actually the most so far. And then finally, October and November. October and November. November looks like 30. So what's 30 plus 25? 55. So the smallest is definitely August and September. Next problem. Maybe I'll stick with this white. I see six. Problem six. Okay, they drew us a line. And they say that this is point A, this is point B, and this is point C. And the figure above AC equals 24. AC is equal to 24. They tell us that AB is equal to BC. AB is equal to BC. So this side, this length has to equal that length. And combined, they add up to 24. So we know that that's going to be 12. And that's also going to be 12, because right, they have to add up to 24, and they're equal. Point D, not shown, is on the line between A and B. So point D is someplace here, such that AD is equal to DB. So if we put D here. Move to a different color. If this is D, they want us. So 12 is this whole length. This whole length is 12, and they're saying AD is equal to DB. So what is what are each of these smaller lengths going to be equal? This is equal to this. So this is going to have to be six, and this is going to have to be six, right? It's because the two sides are equal, and the two lengths are equal, and they add up to 12. Now what are they asking? What is DC equal? So what is this distance? This to to here, from there to there. Okay. So we'd have to go 6 to get to b. So 6 to get to b. And then we'd have to go 12 more to get to c. 6 plus 12, and that gets 18. So this distance is 18. Not too bad. That's problem. That's, that's answer d. Problem 7. Problem 7. If n is a positive integer, then 6 times n, 10 to the negative n plus plus 1 times 10 to the negative n must equal what? So let's simplify it. This is essentially, this is, I mean, they wrote it a little complicated, but we have 6 tens to the negative n here, and then we have one more, right? I mean, 6 times 10 to the negative n, you could rewrite this as 10 to the negative n, plus 10 to the negative n, plus 10 to the negative n plus 10 to the negative n. Not that I'd recommend you to do this on the exam. 10 to the negative n plus 10 to the negative n. How many have I drawn? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right? That's 6 to the negative, 6 times 10 to the negative n. And to that we add one more 10 to the negative n. So how many 10 to the negative n's do we have? We have 7 now. Right? So it's 7 times 10 to the negative n. And that is not a choice. And what's another way of writing 10 to the negative n? Well, that's the same thing as 1 over 10 to the n. So that's 7 times 1 over 10 to the n, which is, of course, equal to 7 over 10 to the n. And that is choice b. Next problem. Actually, I'll do it in the next video, because I, I have less than a minute left.